Good morning, everyone. Here we are on November 14th, and this is our MSL Learn webinar series for today. And Kylie McGregor is with us from the Montana Shared Catalog. She's going to provide us with an overview. And so, Kylie, with that, thanks so much for being here and take it away. Thanks, Cole. Good morning, everyone. As Cole just said, my name is Kylie McGregor, and I am the trainer for the Montana Shared Catalog. If you don't know what the Montana Shared Catalog is, you're going to learn about that today. And if your library is a member of the Shared Catalog, but you're still kind of fuzzy on what that means, you'll also learn about that today. And off we go. So what is on today's agenda? First, we're going to talk about what the Montana Shared Catalog is. Then we're going to talk about what's actually shared within the Shared Catalog. Finally, we'll take a look at what membership may look like and then have a list of resources that, thanks to Cole, was very nicely compiled. Okay. So what is the Montana Shared Catalog? Well, there's a visual representation of it currently on the screen. It's a statewide multi-type library consortium and an effort in resource sharing that began in 2002. It looked a little different back then than it looks today. 20 plus years later, the consortium is currently comprised of 210 libraries in 49 counties. And looking at the map, you can see the different types of libraries that are members, academic, public, school, special. And when we say 210 libraries, we're also counting individual branches. I pulled this screenshot from one of the documents we have on the State Library website, um, and we will share information of how to view that data as well as some other data I'm going to talk about if you have questions and want to look at it for yourself. So membership in the MSC is voluntary. The cost for membership is offset by federal and state funding to enable interested libraries to join, which is a big motivator for folks, especially our one-person libraries, for instance, who don't want the responsibility of administering a complex system or possibly don't have the funding for it on their own. Member libraries may decide to join a sharing group. There are three within the consortium. And doing so allows them to share their physical mater materials in addition to what is already shared just by becoming a member of the MSC. So what do I mean when I say those things are shared? One moment. There are three things shared in the shared catalog that you get by joining. First of all is the software known as an integrated library system or ILS generally. The second thing is the bibliographic records that you as a member library could attach your holdings to. And finally, the system administration and training resources provided by designated staff at the Montana State Library, including myself, and we have four system administrators at this time. Again, sharing your library's materials with other libraries in the MSC is optional. You share materials only if you're in a sharing group, and the type of sharing I'm talking about is different from that of interlibrary loan. That's a different process and not what I'm referring to here. <clears throat> okay, so let's jump into these a little bit more detail. The MSC uses the Symphony ILS. 
uh, it's currently, um, it's a product of the vendor Circe Dynix and the MSC currently uses the following parts of the symphony system. Some of these may be more recognizable to you than others. We have the workflows staff client, which is what staff goes into on the back end to catalog materials or perform circulation tasks and things of that nature. There's also what will be available soon is the web version of that, essentially referred to as Symphony Web. Next, uh, one of our most recent pieces somewhat or something that we're all still definitely diving into to learn is Blue Cloud Analytics referred to as BCA often in our system. And this is a data and analytics tool that gives us information about how the different parts of the system are being used. That includes how workflows or Symfony Web is being used, as well as a couple of the other pieces that I'm going to talk about. The apps that are available for both staff and patrons. So on the patron side, there's the MSC app that patrons can use to search the catalog, place holds, renew items, things like that. And then there's the mobile staff app, which as the name implies, is to help staff do tasks from either a laptop or a tablet. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and finally, we have the online catalog, which is referred to as Enterprise. And this is the interface that patrons can also interact with in addition to the app to search the catalog. Um, it's also something staff may use to help them search the catalog or do their own work. Second, we have the bibliographic records, which are shared. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see a screenshot of the bibliographic record for the Thursday Murder Club, the first book in that series. This is the MARC record, the machine readable format, which is not very human friendly to read. You'll see I'm on the bibliographic tab here. I would be able to see individual libraries holdings of this item if I went to the call number item tab next to it. Now, what patrons will see, or what anyone will see looking from the um, online catalog, is what's on the right-hand side. We have book cover art and clickable links to view more information about this item. You can also see below that which libraries have that item, where it lives, and if it's available or not, or not. pardon me. So the important thing here is when you join the consortium, we want to make sure to have a clean, uh, effective catalog that is easy for both staff and patrons to search in order to find the items that they want. Um, so that is some, a duty that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And finally, the third thing that's shared is access to your system administration and training team and all the things that we can do for you or help you do. I realize there's a lot of text on this slide, so please forgive me. I want it to be kind of an easy reference for folks later. Um, on the right hand side, I have a screenshot of our knowledge base and I'm highlighting the articles that directors should read. Now, this is for directors who may be new to the MSC in that either their library just is about to join or is thinking about joining, or if you're a new director, just new to the position and your library has already been a member of the MSC, or if you're just wanting to brush up on the structure, kind of infrastructure of your library. So you can get an idea of options when it comes to circulation rules. That's how your items check out, for how long they can be checked out, how many times they can be renewed, a lot of that information. 
And then there's information about your item policies. So your item types, meaning how they circulate, and that works in conjunction with the circulation rules, which home locations you have in your library, where you want your items to live, and then item categories, which describe those items for analytics purposes. So you'll be able to look up your collection according to different categories like format, who the audience is, perhaps the genre. You can see those things in Blue Cloud Analytics because they're based off of the item categories you choose when you're cataloging items. Next, you have your user policies. So that's your user profiles. Meaning, is this person a member of the public? Is this person a member of staff, either at a public library, a school, or an academic library, and so on? And depending on what profile they fit, it um, determines how they're able to check things out. You also have your user category. Categories, again, this is for demographics. If, uh, for example, a patron lives within the county or outside of the county, those can be useful statistics. You can have ages and more information to get a better idea of the public that you're serving. <clears throat> and finally, this goes back to kind of the maintenance piece of system cleanup. We want you to be aware of what your options are for processing lost items or for changing things in batch that we can do on your behalf. And this could be fixing cataloging errors, moving items to different home locations if you're reorganizing, changing due dates uh, if you're a school library and need things all to be due at the end of the year, things like that. And don't be afraid to get creative and just reach out to us because there's certainly some batch changes we could probably make for you instead of you having to do it yourself. Um, there are things we can do to help with inventory and all that kind of stuff. So that's something that we can help you set up if you're a library interested in joining the shared catalog. Uh, it's also something that we can revisit with our current libraries and continue to try to make the system more effective and efficient. On the lower half of the right hand slide, I also wanted to highlight that we have landing pages for new staff. And this is quick tutorials and steps on how to do the most common procedures and what the best practices are, which kind of leads nicely into this next slide. The best way to reach out to your system admin and training team is through our online help desk. And right now, this is what it looks like. This is the main search page. And in the page, I just did a sample search for staff training, and immediately it brings up the new staff landing page, a director's landing page, things for school librarians especially to consider for the new school year, and so on. You'll see kind of beneath the results list as well that there are links to our knowledge base as well as a place where you can open a ticket if you have questions. And if you do that, you can create an account where you can save past tickets, whether they're open or closed, to refer to later. So I would be remiss if I didn't specifically talk about cataloging in a consortium. Um, this is one of the responsibilities that comes with joining the consortium. It comes with a lot of benefits and some things are made significantly easier on behalf of staff if you have someone else administering the system and providing training materials. However, there is an expectation that you do your best to help us keep a clean and effective catalog. And that can feel pretty overwhelming, especially if you don't catalog full time or if you're not an original cataloger, maybe you don't have much experience with it. So a lot of 
the things that we try to address both in our training when a library goes live in our system as well as for future reference in the knowledge base and some of the other resources that we're going to share later is how do I search the catalog effectively? This is to know whether or not we have a bibliographic record already in the system that you can attach your holdings to. How do I know which bibliographic record is best? Um, what are our different attachment rules? Because we have a set of standards that we want folks to adhere to when they become members. How do I even attach my item to a bibliographic record so that patrons know I, I have that item available? And what do I do if I can't find a bib record within the shared catalog already? Um, what are the next steps? Next, you can, it may be difficult to know when to discard an item versus when to delete it entirely. And finally, for those who feel like they don't have anywhere else to turn, they can't find a record within the shared catalog, they can't find a record to import, <clears throat> you uh, have the option to request original cataloging assistance in moderation uh, and more. So while we don't have time to go over all of those things, this is not uh, cataloging training. We do have answers to all of these questions in our knowledge base, um, both in written form and in video, and we're constantly working on tweaking those steps to be ever clearer to folks who may not come by cataloging uh, as their profession. So that also kind of ties into one piece of what membership looks like. So if you are not a member of the shared catalog, you would fill out an application, you know, express your interest. We have an application form you fill out. And then once you get approved, which most likely you would, we're not trying to exclude people. We want to make it uh, approachable and welcoming for folks to join. We um, we discuss your configuration, how you want to be set up in the system, whether or not you plan on joining a sharing group, and then you get training on that accordingly once everything's set up and you go live in the system. <clears throat> you also sign a membership contract and it is expected of you that you will abide by the stipulations in that contract as well as those of the MSC bylaws. If you are in a sharing group, which has, they each have their own standard operating procedures based on kind of best practices, you'll want to make sure that you're familiar with those and as well as the cataloging guidelines, circulation best practices, everything we have in our knowledge base for you to refer to. That's kind of the big piece of, you know, honoring the contract and best practices of membership in the shared catalog. The next piece is staying informed. The way we try to reach the most people um, most consistently and effectively is through Gov Delivery. And you can subscribe to the shared catalogs Gov Delivery instance so that you can get our newsletters, any system alerts or other things that you need to be aware of. We try not to bombard you with that um, I don't want to overflow your inbox, but it is the best way that we like to reach out to people. Um, as well as meeting. Uh, if your library becomes a member, we meet uh, at least twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. And during those meetings, we share system updates from your system admin and training team. We try to address concerns that have been brought up over the course of the year, certain troubleshooting issues that need to be addressed. And at, um, at these meetings, you may be voting on something, which I'll talk about a little bit in a second. 
and and doing other things it's also a great time for folks to connect if you're able to attend in person but we always try to have it both an in-person option and an online um, you can also you know, uh, as part of participating in membership or being an active member, you can participate in ad hoc committees as they're formed to maybe address certain issues or uh, see about joining the CMC, which is short for our content management committee. These are folks uh, who have worked on the best practices for cataloging in the consortium and members include you know, full-time catalogers who have plenty of experience original cataloging, as well as your kind of day-to-day -day copy catalogers who may do a bunch of other things in the library, as well as people who maybe don't catalog that often or at all, but uh, help us keep perspective on different parts of the system that we need to think about when we think about these cataloging rules, like how things appear in the online catalog or the impact certain decisions or recommendations may have on staff workflow. Finally, uh, being an active member looks like voting. And we recently voted on, to update our bylaws. But the other thing that you will vote on is the budget presented to you by the MSL team. Um, that's sort of the big one. And yeah, that, that happens every year. So we definitely like to have as many voting members participating as possible in that. So that's kind of the quick spiel on the MSC, what it is what we share and what membership looks like. So now I wanted to just point you towards some resources, both to learn more about the shared catalog as well as um, the state library, other things that may be useful to you. Okay, so the first one's the MSL website, of course, and the next link is to MSL newsletters, one of which is the MSC Gov Delivery that I was referring to, but there are other departments or aspects of what the State Library does that you may want to subscribe to as well, and you can do that from that link. Next to the MSL Help Desk, that's where you can open tickets to reach out to us, access uh, training materials or resources on how to do certain procedures. Next, we have the Aspen events calendar, so you can attend more events and continuing education like this. Thank you all for being here. Uh, the MSL Learn page, as well as the YouTube channel. And then, of course, you can always reach out to us by emailing or calling any of us. Though I will say, for me, it would be most effective to open a ticket and probably most effective for the system administrators as well because we can all see them and kind of pass them along to whoever, whoever they need to go to um, pretty easily. Plus it's nice for us to have a record. We keep statistics on our help desk. Uh, I believe, I'm checking this right now, so far in fiscal year 2024, the, our shared catalog staff have responded to 814 uh, tickets or sp support cases, which is pretty cool. Let's see here. Here's a screenshot of the MSL YouTube channel that you can um, subscribe to and you can go to the playlist tab to kind of browse through the different recordings we have available. And what is next? You have a tiny tech training on the Montana History Portal. That's November 28th at 10. And then there's going to be a presentation on library districts on December 12th at 10 a.m. We would love to hear from you, both on this presentation, of course, and others. If you want to take a shot of this um, evaluation survey uh, code. It'll take you to the survey that you can fill out and give us feedback on what you learned, what you'd like to learn about, all that good stuff. 
Okay. Thanks everyone for taking the time to learn a little bit about the Montana Shared Catalog. And like I said, if you have questions, don't hesitate to open a ticket. Thank you so much, Kylie. I would just like to invite any questions that we have from our participants. You can throw them in the chat or um, unmute yourself if you have any questions. Just also know that we'll have the recording from this session posted to the YouTube channel, uh, and I'll put all kinds of links in our Aspen event and share that with the, the YouTube recording as well. Thank you for sharing all those links, Kalei. I really appreciate it. You were on top of it. No problem. I think my favorite is the MSC dashboard because there's so much we can see about what's going on in the consortium. So please don't hesitate to check that out or any of the other state libraries kind of projects going on. They're all really cool. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, so thanks so much. I will conclude our recording and our session today. Thank you so much, Kylie, for putting this together and for everybody who came today. Have a great week and look forward to the week ahead and our next sessions coming up in December. Thank you, Kalei. This was fun.